Hi, everybody. Let's talk about image transparency and some of the trouble that you run into when you're trying to take an image from Photoshop and bring it into another program like InDesign and make a composite. So here I have a little sample that we're gonna work with uh, to practice this. So this happens to a lot of uh, folks as they're working in InDesign or another page layout program. They're trying to put together various images with text and picture boxes and build their, their layout. But invariably something like this happens where you'll be working with an image and you'll go to place it in your document. And let's say I wanna drop in this little Obi-Wan Kenobi. And what's my problem? This picture, while isolated on a white background, has come through into that picture box with that white background. And so uh, there's no transparency. It has the full image box and that blank white background blocking out the background of the image that I've already put in my InDesign file. And I wanna work around that. So there are various file formats and little techniques you can use uh, to work with transparency while moving your files from one program to another. So let's go back to Photoshop and see what we can do to kind of correct this image. So uh, the first thing we have to do is we have to isolate uh, the character, in this case, General Kenobi from the background, and then place it into a file with a transparent background and save it in the right file format so that it is useful. All right, so first step is going to be to uh, remove that white background. And the simplest way to do that in this, in this case is to go ahead and use the magic wand and click the white background. That way what I'm doing is I'm gonna use the uh, magic wand properties to select the most dominant color and then um, touch it up a little bit. Looks like I need to remove part of his hand and his leg. Uh, and then I can work on separating this image. So I'm gonna go here to the quick selection tool and because I'm selecting the white background, I'm actually going to hold the option key or the alt key on my keyboard and remove a portion of the selection that spilled into his armor. And just by those couple little clicks and taps, um, it deselected those areas from the background that were also included in that selection. It looks like I got most of them, so not much else to really fix. Um, now I can, extract Obi-Wan and remove the background. This original image is a JPEG file, which means it's flattened. So what I'm gonna do is separate Obi-Wan Kenobi from the background. Um, but first, because I made a selection by selecting the white surrounding area, I need to invert that selection so that I grab Obi-Wan instead. So I'm gonna do is select and I'm gonna go to inverse. So now I've got Obi-Wan Kenobi selected and the background is let go. Um, one little trouble spot, which I'm gonna run into on this picture is his lightsaber. Okay, the lightsaber has a fuzzy edge and this makes image transparency even more complicated. It's one thing when you have a harsh edge and a very distinct edge to deal with, but when you're trying to place a file that has some sort of a, a soft detail like that, um, you have to use the right tools to extract the background from that gradient. And so we're gonna do that now with the select and mask tool that's inside Photoshop. So while the selection is still active, I'm gonna click the select and mask button. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna isolate the starting point of my selection so that I can see what I've already got selected. But again, what I'm missing or what, you know, I'm kind of mistakenly included here is the, uh, the halo effect around the lightsaber. See how it still includes some of that white? I need to extract some of that white background from, uh, from the selection. And uh, this is similar to what you might do if you're trying to extract hair from a background selection. So what I'm gonna do is go over and click on the refine edge tool. It's the little brush with what looks like a little hand around it. And while the plus symbol is visible, I'm just gonna go in here and kind of brush the edge of the lightsaber. And what that's gonna do, and I can make it a little bit bigger if I need to, and you can make it bigger by pressing the bracket key on your keyboard. 
what I do is try to brush down the side of the lightsaber, just extracting some of that white background. And you can see some of the checkerboard starting to appear, uh, you know, become more visible as I do this. I'm basically just painting and removing or teaching the, the Photoshop selection to remove and ignore some of the background color. Now, it's a little bit wonky. I'm not gonna waste time trying to perfect my selection at this stage of the game, because I wanna move on and kind of demonstrate this to you guys. But I could spend some time uh, really tweaking and perfecting that selection. But what I was really after is that fuzziness. And you can see the checkerboard kind of showing through and that's gonna help with that fuzziness. The last thing I'm gonna do over here on this properties dialog box is I'm gonna scroll down to the middle, uh, to the bottom under output settings, and I'm gonna select decontaminate colors. And what that's gonna do is it's just gonna further remove the, uh, the white uh, color from the halo of the lightsaber. And then um, on output, it's gonna ask me what do I want to do upon output? In other words, when we close this dialog box, do I want a new layer? Do I want a new layer with a mask? Do I want a new document? I could do any one of those. Just to make it simple, I'm gonna go ahead and say, uh, just new document with a layer mask. I'm gonna click okay. And then what's gonna pop up is a new untitled Photoshop file with Obi-Wan Kenobi extracted with a mask visible, all of that work we just did uh, is now done and saved into this new file. So what I can do is now save this in the correct file format to preserve that uh, transparency. So what are my options when it comes to file formats? Well, when working within the Adobe universe and you wanna work with files, bringing them back and forth, you might, might as well use the Adobe uh, formats. So in this case, I might just save it as a Photoshop file. Um, do a file, save as, select uh, Photoshop, and just go ahead and call this Kenobi One, and uh, leave it as Photoshop format, leave layers, that's fine, and say okay. Because we're working within Adobe software, using the native file format is fine, that way you won't run into any other problems. And you click save, and click okay. You could, if you wanted, create another file format. Um, if you wanna preserve that soft transparency along the lightsaber, the best alternative file format for you is going to be a PNG file. So you do save as, and you click, sorry, uh, PNG under the file format window. It's gonna give you a little warning and say, oh, you gotta save it as a copy, that's fine. Just let it do its thing and click save. And click okay on this too. And now I've given myself two options actually. I made the Photoshop file and I made the PNG file. When working with print, you might as well just stick with Photoshop because the file's not compressed. Now let's go to InDesign and see what happens. So here I've got that original picture that I placed that I don't want to use. So I'm going to go ahead and delete it. I'm going to go to the file menu and I'm going to say place. And I'm going to look for that Kenobi. I'm going to go ahead and use the Photoshop file I just made. Click open. And now I'm just going to click on my page. And now you can see it came through with that transparency that I created in Photoshop. And I can resize that, that image and kind of reposition it. Look at how the, uh, the lightsaber came through. Uh, frankly, there's a little bit of a halo still left on the lightsaber that's not perfect. It has to do with uh, the low res version of this sample file. And because I went kind of quickly doing the, uh, the little tapered edge, but you could perfect that by spending more time in the selection process, playing with the mask inside Photoshop. But either way, you can get really nice image transparency just by doing that sort of adjustment inside Photoshop. All right, so I hope that helps so you can work better with your images and uh, have a good time playing around with your files. All right, see you next time.